Over the last few videos, we've been uh, discussing some of the basics about inverse trig functions, but uh, we haven't really done anything with them. And so that, that's what we want to start doing now is, you know, what, what can these guys be used for? Well, one of the um, very popular questions that's often asked in regards to inverse trig functions is um, to evaluate them at certain places. And uh, there's really two main things we have to remember when we're trying to evaluate an inverse trig expression. Uh, first of all, the outputs are going to be radian angles, not the inputs. And that, that's kind of strange because normally when, when you think about a, a trig function, like if you have y equals sine x, you plug in an angle right into, into the trig function and then you get out a real value. But if this was uh, an inverse relationship, if this was, you know, uh, let's see, like x equals sine inverse of y, so to speak, or something like that, look at where the angle is. The angle is actually here. The angle is the output of the ex uh, of this sine inverse expression right here, not what you plug in. So that, that's the first thing to notice. Um, the second thing uh, that we have to be very careful about, and I'll have to explain this when we get more into it, is you have to be extremely careful with your domains and ranges. Because if you remember, your original trig functions were not one-to-one. -one. They didn't have inverses. So we had to restrict the domain. And then that, that affected the uh, domains and the ranges and whatnot for your inverse functions. And uh, it just winds up being a very important issue to be very careful with your domains and ranges. But we'll, we'll talk more about that in, in just a minute. Okay, so I, I lined up a few examples. So let's just take a look at these here. Um, the, the ones in this video are going to be uh, a little bit on the easier side. These do get more difficult, but we'll cover some of the more difficult types in the uh, the next video so um, here we go here's just a, a very basic example to begin with sine inverse of negative root 3 over 2 this is a basic inverse trig expression that I want to evaluate um, and he, here's the main I guess the main approach to these guys we will admit that we are not as comfortable with inverse trig functions as we are with regular plain Jane trig functions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna somehow try to rewrite this expression to, to where we can see regular trig functions, not inverse trig functions. So if I don't know what this is, what I'll typically do is set it equal to Y or X, or I mean, you can pick whatever letter you want. And, uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply sign to both sides. And so these two, equalities are going to be equivalent. You could say sine of y, sine of y equals negative root 3 over 2, and that would be equivalent to y equals sine inverse of negative root 3 over 2. Just imagine applying sine to both sides. Here, I'll, I'll try to squeeze this in if, if I can. Uh, if we apply sine to the left side and sine to the right side, so here you see we have sine y, right? So that's what we wanted. But sine of sine inverse would be analogous to like a square and a square root or a plus seven and a minus seven or a times three or divide by three. They cancel each other out. So sine and sine inverse will negate each other and you just get negative root three over two. So that, that's where that's coming from in case that wasn't clear. All right, now why, why would I prefer to write it this way instead? Uh, for me, and, and at least for most students, uh, this uh, to me is, is much easier to mentally comprehend because this is asking in plain English, sine of what angle would give you negative root three over two. And if you're somewhat proficient at the unit circle, which hopefully we are, I, I can very easily think about the unit circle and think of an angle or two or three that if I took sine of it would give me negative root three over two. So just look with your eyes. Hopefully you would look right here because sine of that angle is negative root three over two. Sine is the y coordinate, if you recall, uh, as well as right here. So this, this value, this y that's um, gonna be my answer, sine inverse of negative root three over two, is the angle 
that would give us one of these points. So you, know, you say, oh, well, okay, Devin, that's, that's not so bad. Uh, y would be, let's see, unit circle. Oh, I know where these guys are. Uh, this is four pi over three. So maybe, maybe Y is four pi over three since sine of four pi over three is negative root three over two. Maybe it's five pi over three um, and on and on you go. Um, there's lots of different ways to say these angles. Uh, you could go around a few times and then land there. Uh, you could even back up. You could even back up from the X axis and call it negative pi over three. Um, on and on you go. There's thousands of ways to say this angle Y. So are all of these the correct answer? Well, it turns out, no, they're, they're not actually. And it has to do with that restricted domain and range uh, issue that, that we discussed earlier in, in the previous videos. Uh, here's a quick crash course. Uh, if you remember, your original sine curve was not one to one. And I know this is kind of a, a poor graph, so just bear with me. So what we did was we restricted our um, domain from only minus pi over two to pi over two. Uh, so minus pi over two to pi over two. Uh, and so this was on the original sine curve. So the outputs of the inverse sine function could be between minus pi over two to pi over two. Well, uh, you see here, oh, and by the way, I didn't actually draw the, uh, the sine inverse graph. Uh, the sine in inverse graph looks something like this that went from minus pi over 2 to uh, to pi over 2. So you see this is the only y values you get is from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. 4 pi over 3 is not in that range so that can't be my answer. 5 pi over 3 is not in this range. You see, even though there was uh, thousands of ways to say these two angles, there's only going to be one correct answer. And it turns out to be negative pi over 3, because negative pi over 3 is within the interval minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Now, how can we see that graphically? Well, let me give you a color here. Uh, let me draw minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 on the unit circle. Um, here's minus pi over 2, back up pi over 2 units. Here's positive pi over two units. So I have to be in this window here. So do you see how four pi over three is outside that window? That's why he's gone, okay? Um, now this is a little less clear, but five pi over three is also gone. And you say, well, Devin, it's within that window. Not exactly because he actually goes over and around He's actually not between minus pi over two to pi over two, and you would see that more clearly on a number line, but hopefully you realize that we've gone much farther than that restricted pink interval there, okay? But negative pi over three, if you notice, negative pi over three just goes back negative pi over three units, and so you're still safely within that, um, that restricted um, interval there. So uh, that this would be the one and only correct answer to sine inverse of negative root 3 over 2. This would be equal to negative pi over 3 and nothing else. Now if you remember what I said earlier, your outputs are radian angles, not your inputs. And sure enough, that's exactly what we saw. Our output of sine inverse negative root 3 over 2 was a radian angle. So that that's um, hopefully pretty clear to you. Okay, let's go a little quicker now. Um, you remember an alternate notation was to use arc cosine and sine and tangent as opposed to inverse. So let's try this one here. Uh, we're gonna jump right to it. We know exactly what we need to do. We're not that familiar with these guys, so we'll set this equal to y. We'll rewrite it as cosine of y equals negative root two over two. And in plain English, this is like asking cosine of what mystery angle would give you negative root two over two as your um, cosine value or your x coordinate of the point. Uh, so I think uh, on, on my unit circle, where would that be? Well, it could be right here or right here. Both of these places have x coordinates of negative root two over two. But if you think of your restricted domain for the uh, original cosine graph and the subsequent um, range of the arc cosine graph, um, it was zero to pi. Zero to pi was our our um, uh, range of what could come out of the arc cosine function. So I don't think this is going to do it. Here, let me highlight this in pink. 
uh, here's zero, here's pi, and so I need a point within that range. It looks like this fellow's our guy, and so the only question is who is that? Um, that would be y equals that angle, cosine of an angle. That angle uh, would be, let's see, who would that be? 3 pi over 4. So that would be um, arc cosine of negative root 2 over 2. That's the only correct answer. Even though you could maybe back up or go around a bunch of times, none of those are, are the right angle. It has to be only on the interval 0 to pi. That's the only um possible outputs of the arc cosine graph. Okay, so we're tr trucking right along. All right, last one, tan inverse of one, tan inverse of, uh, of one. So we know the drill, we're gonna set this equal to a value, and I've been writing y, but you don't, you don't have to write y, you could choose a different letter. Uh, so we say tan of y equals one. Now, tangent is not immediately clear on the unit circle, uh, perhaps it would be easier to break this up as sine of y over cosine of y equals 1. Or you might could say sine of y equals cosine of y if you move the cosine over to the right-hand side. So you think uh, to yourself, where is sine and cosine the same? Well, it might be at pi over 4. It might be at uh, 3 pi over 4. It might be at, um, I'm sorry, I uh, mistyped that, my fault, not 3 pi over 4. Uh, that would be 5 pi over 4 down there, my fault. I was thinking ahead of myself. You could also call this guy negative 3 pi over 4. I was getting ahead of myself a little bit. You could back up 3 pi over 4 units, and on and on you go. Lots of different ways to save these two places. But as we've seen, they're not all correct. What is tan inverse of 1? Well, we have to remember the um, restricted domain of the original tangent graph, which turned out to be the range uh, of the tan inverse graph. And that was minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. So which of these guys is between minus pi over 2? Let me draw this in pink like I've been doing. Minus pi over 2 to pi over 2? Well, I think this is the only guy. So tan inverse of 1 would be simply pi over 4. And again, that's the only uh, correct value there. So, um, so anyways, ho hopefully that um, makes inverse trig expressions a little bit more clear. Uh, li like I said earlier, there are uh, some tougher examples that we need to discuss. Um, sometimes they'll um, do layers of trig and inverse trig expressions and that that can get a little complicated i didn't want to make this video too long though so we'll look at some of those tougher examples um, coming up uh, shortly